Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. So I'm continuing the series that will make yourselves more familiar with Click Geo Analytics. I'll make sure to include samples and additional links for the previous videos that I created a few weeks back. So you can kind of look back to see what you've missed if this is new to you. In this particular video, we're going to look at the binning operation, which is part of the Click Geo Analytics connector. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm very excited to do this and show you because it's actually quite simple uh, and it's pretty fun to do as well. So I'm going to start out with my instance of ClickSense. In this case, I'm using ClickSense Enterprise. This can also work with ClickSense Desktop. Keeping in mind, you need to have Click Geo Analytics extensions installed as well as the licensed Click Geo Analytics connector. So I'm going to start from scratch and I'm just going to create a new app and I'm going to call this one Crime stats bidding and then click create and this will create the app and then click open app now I don't have any data in this app and to show you that I'm going to do this live and in real time I'm actually going to go to a link that one of my colleagues gave me that will give me data for crime statistics within the city of Chicago so I'll include this URL in the descriptions as well but all I'm going to do is export and then click on the CSV and it'll download to my desktop. Now this is about a 45 megabyte file, which I already have available to me, but just wanted to show you that I'm not altering this file in any way. I'm taking it directly from this site. So now I'm going to add data from files and other sources, and I'm going to select shared files, and then I'm going to choose my data folder. Now, obviously I'm not setting up these particular steps you should know how to do this already especially if you're going to be using click geo analytics these are some of the basics in this case i have this file connection already set up to point to the location where my csv file is and there's the csv for the crime data so we're going to inspect this file now there's something to point out here is that this file contains latitude and longitude fields when I click Add Data, we're actually going to profile and inspect this particular file, and it's actually going to create the coordinate point location uh, called latitude uh, underscore longitude, or in this case, I believe it's longitude underscore latitude. So it's actually going to create that field for us, and that's a field we're going to use. Okay, I'm not going to use the Inside Advisor for this step. What I'm going to do is just basically edit my sheet, and we're going to put a couple of stats down. So let's grab a KPI object and you'll see within the fields we have arrests, beat, block, case numbers, IDs, latitude, longitude. There's that point I was mentioning earlier, etc. So each ID is a particular crime case, if you will. So we're going to add a measure here and we're going to select ID and we're going to do a count of ID. So there's 183 individual cases that have been logged that have their own IDs. But these particular cases could occur at the same location. So we're going to use distinct locations within this as well. So I'm going to grab my longitude and latitude. I'm going to drop it right on top of the count, add as measure. And we're going to choose count, longitude, latitude. And then we're just going to expand this and go into the expression editor. And we're just going to insert distinct now this could also be done with the tools in the expression editor, but this makes it a little quicker. And we have 96,000 distinct locations. Okay, so 183,000 or so uh, individual cases created or incidents and 96,000 distinct locations where these incidents occurred. Okay, I'm not going to aesthetically change things, you know, labels and sheet styling. It's just going to take more time. Kind of defeats the purpose of the example. Okay. So we're going to take that and I'm just going to grab a bar chart and we're going to add a dimension and we're going to look for the type of crime. In this case, we have primary type and then the measure, we're going to do a count of the um, ID. Okay, and there's the crime types and the counts of those crimes. In this case here, let's also change the appearance, make it a horizontal bar chart. Okay, so now we have our two KPIs. And just for argument's sake, I'm going to grab the map object. Now, I already have the Click Geo Analytics maps 
extensions installed. So I'm just going to grab my map object. And then I'm going to add a point layer. Okay, I'm going through this fast. This is something you shouldn't be following. This is just to show you what I'm building. I'll include the sample app. When I get to the binning part, I will slow down a little bit and explain what's going to happen. So for the dimension here, we're just going to add the individual ID. And then for the location and the size, we're just going to choose the longitude and latitude. In this case here, we just delete the aggregation. Okay, so there are all the crimes that occurred within the Chicago uh, area. Now, obviously, we could use a density map, and you've seen me do that in other examples uh, in other videos that we have. Now, what I'd like to do is actually create a bin, or in other words, a representation that kind of puts boundaries around the number of points in a particular area. Okay, so instead of looking at overlapping dots, we can choose a bin in the form of, let's say, a square or a hexagon, and then color it by the number of points or incidents in that particular area. Okay, and then in another video, then what we can do is maybe drill into that bin and then expose the individual points in that area, like a drill down. So to keep these videos at a decent size, you know, we'll cover one part at a time. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this bubble layer. And we're going to now use the operation for binning. And this is done within the Click Geoanalytics connector. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is jump over to my data load editor. Okay, and you can see the auto generated section. This is the particular section that's been generated when we added the CSV file. Now I'm just going to unlock it because I just want to grab a piece of information out of here. And that information is going to be the name of the table alias that was created, Crimes 2018. So I'm just copying that. That's all I needed from the existing data load. So in other words, we have data that's been loaded. We're going to reference this data now by using this table alias. I'm going to create a new tab, and we're going to call this tab binning. And then from my connections list, which I've already created the connection, in this case it's not that difficult to do. You just select Create New Connection and then you select the uh, Click Geoanalytics connector and then from the list you select Cloud and that's pretty much all you do and you give it a name. Now that's already been created here so I'm just going to click Select Data and if you're watching some of the other videos you saw a couple of examples uh, using some of these operations such as for geocoding we use the address point lookup uh, we also use the closest operator to get the distance in this example here we're just going to select binning Okay, here, the shape of the bin that you want, a hexagon or a rectangle. In this case, I like the hexagon binning. And then these two parameters basically denote the size of the hexagon or rectangle that's going to encompass the individual dots or boundaries. Now, if you want more technical information, you can click on this help and it'll explain what it is. But for this example, I'm just going to use some values that I know worked well for my example. It might require a little trial and error for you. So the side length of the bins, I'm going to use first 0 0.03, and then we're going to rerun this again, and I'm going to try 0.01. I'm going to show you the difference. Uh, and bin width height ratio 1.5, I'm going to leave that alone. The name of the data set, that's going to come back. In this case, we can just leave it as data set. And then the type, meaning the uh, geometry and the ID that it's going to be coming from a certain table that we've already loaded. So in this case, we're going to select loaded table. And if you remember, the name of the table was Crimes 2018. So that's the data that's already been loaded. And then we just specify what we want to reference for these particular bins. So we have an ID for each individual incident, and then the geometry. In this case, the geometry, if you remember, was latitude underscore longitude. So I'm just going to go and grab that directly from my KPI object. Oops. And I'm just going to grab this field, longitude, latitude. This is basically the point that was generated. So I'm going to go back to click Geoanalytics Connector, and I'm just going to paste in that particular field. 
Okay, the geometry or type, as you might recall from another video, anything that is put together or concatenated, such as longitude, latitude, the way we represented, that is the actual coordinate point. So that's the geometry type. If it was a separate longitude, a separate latitude field, then you would choose latitude and longitude point. In this case here, we're using that coordinate. Okay, that's all we need here. So we just click next, click insert script, and that's it, you don't have to touch anything. Now, just a little word of advice, if you made a mistake, you can control A, highlight everything, delete, then reselect the connector and it will remember your parameters. Just make sure you keep the data load editor screen open in this instance here, or these parameters will be removed. Insert script, and then we click load data. So this is basically going to take care of everything that you need to know to create the center point of where the boundary will exist, as well as the coordinates to create the polygons um, that will draw out the hexagon. Okay, so I'll give you an example of what I mean. I'm going to go back to our canvas. And just for an example, let's grab a table. And let's add a dimension and I'm going to show you what fields have come back. You're going to see a number of fields that come back with the um, boundaries. So that's the HH and HH0. I'm not sure exactly where those names come from. I didn't really talk to the products team to understand the naming convention. All I know is I just need these two fields here. So here's the center point and you can see it's just basically a longitude and a latitude coordinate. That's basically denotes the center of the hexagon um, shape that's going to be drawn. And then if we add another column and I add this one right here without the center point, the, that's the actual points that are going to be drawn that basically draw out the hexagon lines. Okay, it's just a little background information so you can understand what those points do. So when you add that to what's called an area layer, it's basically going to draw out those boundaries. So we'll go to custom objects. And I'm going to grab a click geoanalytics um, area layer and I'm going to drop it right here. Okay, the dimension in this case here or the ID is going to be the center point. In this case here, we select the geometry with the center point. And then the location ID is going to be the individual um, polygon points that I showed you, which is the one without the center point. So the field without the center point, which is this one. Now it's going to select the aggregation, but you can just remove the aggregation for argument's sake. And now you can see we have our individual bins. So within those bins are a collection of those individual incidents that occurred in those particular locations. So now we can color this under appearance, go to colors, Turn off auto colors, color by measure. And then here we can just select from our expression editor a count of the number of incidents. So ID count insert and click apply. And there you go. So now the darker bins represent a higher concentration of those data points. And if you hover over one, for example, 10,000 individual incidents in that location, and it'll kind of zoom in to that bin. Now, I have other examples where you click in and it shows the individual points, and we'll save that for the next video um, because there's a couple little bit more techniques you can learn there. Okay, now one quick thing that I wanted to talk about, the size of the particular hexagon, as I've mentioned. If I go back into the particular binning operation script that was inserted and I just take it out and then I select my connector again and we're going to change 0 0.03 to 0 0.01 click next click insert and click load and now I'm going to go back over here you're going to see in a few seconds these sizes of the hexagonal bins are going to change so that's the different type of uh, radius or edges for the width and the height. Um, as I mentioned, there's more detail within the help that explains that, but it all depends on how you want to collect the number of individual incidents that occur in a particular boundary or range that denotes what sizes you want to use. 
Okay, so now you can see you have a little bit more of a distinct gradient coloring where other incidents have been spread out based off of the size of the bins. Okay, so that is your example of binning. I will include this example uh, where this video is posted. Understand that these videos are posted in YouTube and uh, then they are embedded within the post in the Click community. And the Click community has the video as well as the sample data and the sample files that you can use within your ClickSense installation. Alrighty, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I want to know what you think. Leave your comments and questions, and I will do my best uh, to address them, as well as our other Click community members that can also help. Thanks for your time, guys. I'll see you on the next video.